Hi everyone, my name is Victoria Fernandez and welcome to my channel, I live to inspire mental health. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I post weekly videos about mental health and my experience with bipolar disorder. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the difference between feeling sadness and having a bipolar depressive episode. Um, but before we start, I do want to say that I have made several playlists about different videos that I've made um, because I know that I've made a lot of videos and sometimes a lot of that content can get lost um, just because there's so much going on, especially since they're in Spanish and English. Um, so therefore I've made playlists. In those playlists, I've talked about, you know, whether it comes to bipolar disorder, my experience at Google, how my parents have reacted to my diagnosis um, and other things like that. And I will keep making them, but I thought that was a great way to start if you're looking for something more specific. So with that, I want to talk about, you know, this whole difference between having a an episode uh, versus just feeling sad because like things happen in life and we're humans and I want to talk about this because sometimes having a mental illness can make us feel like we don't really know who we are you know like we feel like are we are, are our feelings even real um, or are they not are they our mental illness or is it just because I'm sad and the thing is that it can be both and you can also have an isolated thing where you're literally feeling sad because something happened to you well you can also have be having an episode but before we talk about that I do want to state the differences because there is a difference between you know sadness between depression and between a bipolar depression or an episode so while we do love to use the word depression and throw it around here and there um, it is important that it that to know that it's something that is more serious than just sadness so oftentimes when we feel down for one day we like to say oh i'm so depressed but that's actually not true necessarily so Although sadness can lead to depression, um, depression is more severe. Depression is something that you don't feel like getting out of bed. You have trouble getting through the day. There aren't moments in your day where you want to you know, laugh or anything like that. You stop doing things that you enjoy. Um, and you have even suicidal thoughts at times. And this is something that can be for longer term. Whereas in sadness, it's something that, you know, it can go away with a few days. You can feel better by doing certain things, such as talking to a loved one or um, maybe going to a psychologist if you feel the need to do that. Sadness can turn into depression and depression is something that should be treated or it's important to seek the help needed, especially if you're having those thoughts and you negative thoughts, you know, suicidal thoughts and feel that like you can't get out of it. Um, or somebody in your family feels you know that you should go to a doctor then it's important to always seek help now bipolar depression can be a little different because having bipolar disorder is definitely having some type of mood swings we've talked about before in my videos about having either bipolar 1 or bipolar 2 I mainly talk about bipolar 2 because that's what I was diagnosed with so that's what my experiences have taught me and what I know about the best um, but basically with bipolar 2 you can have these states of depression and sometimes it's like okay so which one am I having am I you know having an episode or am I you know just having human feelings like I talked about in the beginning and that's a huge struggle that I went through at the beginning whenever I was first diagnosed I had a huge like you know self crisis where I was like who am I have all of my feelings that I've ever had been alive like am I even you know you start am I even human like what is this you start having all these thoughts and you're trying to process who you are and everything that you've gone through at least I did um, and it was really hard because I was wondering you know what has been genuine what have I actually gone through um, but with time Fortunately, I've been able to tell the difference and I've been able to understand that there is moments where you are going to have an episode and there's moments where you're just going to have feelings and there's moments where you're going to have both because if you know a little bit about bipolar disorder or mental health overall, you can see that things like stress or life events can affect one thing or can make one thing worse. So what might affect the little stress that might affect somebody one way might be you know manageable for somebody who has a mental illness it might be something huge like a task that is really hard to overcome like a little stress may cause you to have a panic attack and those are moments when you have to realize that it's important to get help 
Now, I also want to talk about this because there are different ways to deal with it. You know, the way that you deal with sadness might not be the same way that you deal with your mental illness or with depression. Um, but in this case, we're just talking about sadness versus the bipolar depression. So some of the ways that I have known the difference and I can tell you that I have even experienced this recently with that is that whenever I'm having a bipolar episode, it's, you know, I can have like mood swings, but not like I could be fine at one moment and then the next moment I feel like crying and like the world should end and I hate myself. And they're just destructive thoughts that don't make sense. Like I could be having like the, you know, I could be completely fine and then suddenly I'm crying and crying and crying for no reason. Nothing actually happened. It was just, you know, I don't feel good anymore and I still ha I start having suicidal thoughts. I still have I start having, you know, I hate myself, all this kind of destructiveness. And it's just kind of out of nowhere sometimes. And with time, I've realized that those things are because of my mental illness. There's some type of chemical imbalance. It could be my medications. It could be that I'm really stressed in life and it's affecting my mental illness. Um, recently, I have been trying to lower my medications because I have been stable for a long time. And that's a decision that I talked about with my doctor. So obviously, that is a long process. And for me, you know, I tried to take a little bit off my medication. And I was terrified because I don't want to feel depressed again. I don't want to have these negative thoughts feel terrible, you know, when nothing is bad, like nothing is extremely bad, you know, around me. Um, so basically, I I start, I take it off and this was recently and it was just a little bit. I was just trying it out to see what would happen and all that kind of stuff. It's always important to do this with a doctor. They should give you their consent to do it because it can be really dangerous to be playing around medications when you don't have a professional who backs it up or who's monitoring monitoring you. Um, but basically, you know, I'm terrified about this, but I'm like, okay, I think it's time. So I take it, like I stopped taking a little bit of it and I was fine for the first you know five days right and i'm like okay like great like nothing happened i'm fine then the sixth day hits and i get triggered by something very small and i start crying and crying and crying and crying and i can't stop it it, it feels different than when something else happens right this is a feeling that it ha it's kind of an empty emotion like it's deep sadness but there's nothing really behind it it's like superficial in a way at least that's my experience and that's how i feel it um but i can't stop crying and it's just it feels terrible and i'm like oh my gosh like here we go again i am going to have to you know increase it again whatever um fortunately it went away but that the next day i had class and i did not want to go to class i start crying crying like my mom's like what's wrong and i'm like i don't know like i hate myself um i start having terrible thoughts and like it just doesn't make sense because i've been stable for a long time and there's nothing going on in my life that should make me feel like that so anyways we gave it a few days and i it turns out it went away which was great um and that was fine, but in that moment, you know, I realized that it was a chemical imbalance. I realized that it was because I stopped taking my medication or I stopped taking a little bit of my medication, which affected me. Um, but in another in instance, like you guys know that right now we're going through a difficult time around the world. Um, this, you know, virus has hit everybody one way or another. I think it's personally affected a lot of people who have mental illnesses and who are not like completely stable yet and everybody honestly. Um, and I do want to say that just because somebody has it worse doesn't mean that you can't feel and you can't feel sad and all that kind of stuff because it has kind of hit all of us. Whether we like it or not, it has. Um, for me specifically at the beginning, I spent a really long time without being able to see people that I love people who helped me be stable and therefore I was I fell into this deep 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 sadness I was just so sad I didn't want to do anything all I wanted to do was cry it was like, all this kind of stuff that you know made me feel terrible but that was different than my mental illness and that's my whole point that you can have feelings that are your mental illness or that are because something's happening the difference here that I realized was that 
something was happening. I wasn't able to see this person and that was making me really sad. That was affecting me. But if I could do that, if I could do what I wanted to do, then that sadness would go away. Now, this kind of stuff happens all the time, whether you lose a loved one, you go through a breakup, you move or you know all the endless stuff that happens to everyday people all the time you know life struggles and that can make us sad um but here there was a reason why it wasn't empty i had real feelings you know and ultimately um those things are can be resolved if you could have that thing back or if you could do what you wanted to do so that's when you know that it's not like a bipolar episode at least that's how i know and it's like you know this is something that can be controlled that it's not in my head that it's not because of medications but it's actually something that can physically be controlled sometimes it can sometimes it can't because as we talked in the beginning sadness can lead to depression if it's a longer term and that's something that needs different types of help but in this case for example, I had the help of my psychologist and sometimes some people might need the help of a friend, of a loved one, um, rather than going to a doctor. And that's one of the differences um, that I realize. And it's important to know that you can have these emotions. Like, you know, having a mental illness just adds a different layer to all of our feelings or a different section to all of those feelings. But it doesn't make us any less human. And I think this is hard for loved ones to understand sometimes. I know that for me and my parents at the beginning, it was really difficult for them to just understand that I could feel sad because I was just sad and it wasn't my depression. And they've always, you know, taken care of me and like been, you know, on the lookout to see if there's anything wrong with me or anything like that. But there was moments where I was like, I'm just crying because I'm sad because something happened. And that is a normal thing because we are human and we do have these feelings and that's that's because we're normal that's because you know we are allowed to have this now another thing is that if for example you see that you get stressed about something and it's kind of extreme like you have some type of reaction to something and it's like i shouldn't we react in this way this is like too much this is exaggerated and other people don't really react like that then there might need you might need to go get help that might be something else you know sometimes sometimes life struggles can trigger a higher response to your mental illness can trigger you to react a certain way and that's an example of them combining so i mean i talk about all this as my experience um, i'm clearly not a doctor um, and i've just learned all this stuff from you know going through it from learning from it from going to therapy and going to the doctor so i wanted to make this video to hopefully make you feel better um, or try to understand that different types of emotions might need different types of help you know you might not need to go to a psychiatrist if you're feeling sad for a few days but if it's something more serious, like you can't get out of bed, you're not eating, um, life is terrible, you're having suicidal thoughts and it's time to go seek a doctor's help. Um, but if it's not, if you've just gone through a breakup or you know, you've lost a loved one, like I said before, or it can be things that might not be even be that serious, but they're causing you to have emotions, which is, which is normal because we're humans. Some of us are more sensitive than others and that's absolutely fine that's okay um then you might need a different type of treatment maybe watch a movie that makes you smile maybe hang out with people that make you feel better uh, but it's really about analyzing it and again if you have a mental illness you can have you can also have these normal feelings you just have to realize when is the time for me to get help like is it like for example i have my psychologist and i talk to her about absolutely everything not necessarily my mental illness that much anymore but life struggles that i i, I have and that helps me but if it becomes if for example i go to a consultation with her and i'm like i'm having suicidal thoughts i can't anymore with this all this kind of stuff she might tell me you need to go to a psychiatrist you need to go talk to your psychiatrist and get that help but if it's something going on in my life, she might give me coping mechanisms to feel better. And that might be sufficient for me to keep going in life and, you know, overcome. But 
Anyways, I just want to say that you are allowed to have feelings. You are human. Um, it's normal to have that confusion if you've just been diagnosed. Um, it takes time, but the more self-aware that you become, uh, the better you get at having a healthier and happier life. So with that, I really hope that you like this video. And if you do, I would really love it if you could subscribe and like and comment and share it with somebody who you believe should watch this message. And always remember that there's a lot of the end of the tunnel and a bad day does not mean a bad life.